If you thought that the most annoying thing in Sea of Thieves was getting hit ragged, then let me open your eyes, my friend. I mean, at least the hit rag can work in your favor, uh, sometimes anyway. Listen, we all gotta do what we gotta do to get the content. For some people, that means tucking on another crew, and for others, that means finding the tucker. My friends and I have a bit of a track record of inadvertently annoying the crap out of server hoppers aiming to achieve such feats. Because when we are left to choose between siding with a PvP bro or an oblivious crew that would sink five minutes into their voyage, yeah, we're gonna try and help the new guys. Not for any sense of moral obligation, but just because we find it funny. And in an amusing twist of fate, we found ourselves in a situation where we accidentally blew up a Tucker after stealing the key to a Fort of Fortune. But how exactly did we end up in that scenario, and what did the server hoppers decide to do after failing the tuck? Well my friends, you're about to find out, so put on your tucking clothes, make sure to check those emissary tables, and get ready for another chapter of the Sea of Tales. Now, to understand how we got into this whole mess in the first place, you need to understand what happened in the last episode. You know, the one where we built a mermaid trap with a whopping 20 kegs? Those of you who have seen that episode will know that the trap did not exactly work as intended. In fact, the plan was so incredibly convoluted that after four hours of setup and baiting attempts, I decided to pay another crew to set it off and pretend to be surprised. That's right, my friends, I hired paid actors. How did I pay them? With the promise of a fort of fortune. Though getting my hands on that key was not as simple as I made out to be in that aforementioned story, the galleon that we sunk last episode was not the only vessel aiming to make the fort's riches their own, and the server hoppers we fought were not the only ones aiming to steal it. It felt like every ship on the sea had their hands on that pie at least once, and since we had so many chefs in the kitchen, it was reasonable to assume that the pie was almost done. After sinking the last ship at the fort, Brandon met another crew on the ferry of the damned, whom he promptly convinced to meet us at the farf. The only problem was that our new friends as well as our new enemies were running the same class of ship, and they just so happened to look the exact same. As you might remember, keeping our friends afloat was very important for our plans, so I had to figure out who of these lads were on my side. Yeah, Are you guys friends or foe? Hey, uh, it's, it's us, the other sloop that's on fire. I can't see anything right now. Alright, got it! My teammate has killed the other sloop, by the way, so... Alright, good job! Thank you. Uh, I'll go aboard this time. I know who friend or who foe is! Bro. Uh, I think I found out. Hey, guy in tucking clothes, I'm behind you. The guy in black? Hey, you're the friend, right? Hello? I'm behind you. I'm behind you, friend. Yo, I was watching out, man. Yo, get out. <laughs> But chilling, he did not. As it turned out, our new friends were quite capable fighters, and Lord knows that I had no intention of ending up on the wrong end of their blunderbuss. What followed was a mutual agreement to alliance up, a swift explanation of what I needed them to do, and the promise that the Fort of Fortune would be theirs. But just after we finished the fort, a new challenger appeared. We collectively decided to keep the key on my ship until the threat had been dealt with, and well, let's just say that a frontal assault was not the best way to go about trying to fight us. At the time, we had no reason to believe that this crew would make an attempt on our lives again. Losing so horrifically whilst running your face into the brick wall of an alliance usually makes most pirates give up. And with that false sense of security, we sailed over to our trap so that I could receive their end of the bargain before we handed over ours. One giant explosion later, the ship had not taken any damage and they decided to scuttle so that it appeared as though the trap was not a complete failure. And no, I am not going to redo the trap with a bunch of stronghold kegs. Part of our agreement was to meet up at Reaper's hideout. It would show that we had no intention of emptying the vault on our own while they are making their way back to us and as such, it made for a good show of faith. Also at that point, Josh's contract ran out and he had to off himself, leaving Brandon and I to finish the rest. As our alliance convoy made its way back to the fort, Brandon and I were confident that we could wrap this voyage up in no time at all, even while being one man down. But that confidence faded into nothingness when we finally arrived at the fort. Oh, thank I you. Got him. Oh, that was a Tucker?! What?! Wait, what? Yep, despite the length of time we spent away from the fort with the key on our ship, and despite the fact that we sank their vessel in a matter of minutes when they tried to fight us, that tenacious little sloop was back and they were not out of ideas to try and take us on. We were on borrowed time, so I handed over the key for us to begin the process of loading the cargo on their ship. Naturally, we destroyed the kegs to make sure that no other tucker could use them against us. While I was helping to unload the vault, Brandon made sure to load up our supplies for the inevitable next fight that these guys were bound to try and go for again. If you saw the last episode, then you know that AL 
a lot of supplies were used in futile battles aiming to bait our opponents with a mermaid trap, meaning that an all-out naval battle would be our biggest weakness at present, especially whilst being one man down. But that weakness of ours had to remain a secret. A deterrent barrage of cannonballs was meant to hide the fact that we were as low on supplies as we were on manpower, though an obvious lack of chain shots may have given away our situation. The server hoppers continued to circle the island while we hastily tried to load up the goods, but we only realized that we had to deal with more than one enemy when a keg exploded on our brigantine. The culprit was nowhere to be found, and naturally Brennan and I immediately swooped in to keep us afloat, but these hit and run tactics definitely put us on edge. We had to expedite the process before the assault could build up any momentum, but leaving behind just a single piece of loot to us felt like giving up. Eventually, even the smallest trinket was accounted for and we beckoned our friends to make haste towards Reaper's hideout. I was doing a courtesy tucking check on our brigantine while Brandon was off on our friend's vessel to do the same over there. Competent as these guys have proven to be, we felt responsible for their safety, so I tried to sell the brig on my own for the duration of our trip. Now at that point, I was fully aware of the fact that avoiding combat was not an option. Fighting on the open sea, however, would put us at a huge disadvantage, so I made the executive decision to evade the enemy ship until we arrived at Reapers. Though as it turned out, sailing a brigantine on my own was more difficult than anticipated, resulting in me running our ship into the island. We had no time for blunders like that because the enemy had finally caught up to us. They send the player, they send the player. It's on the island. He bounced. I, I hit him. Right can tower, I think. Unless that's you. No, I'm dead. Okay, um, I'm gonna go back on to uh, the... Can you let... Mm. Yeah, do you wanna go? Yeah, let me try this once. Oh my, yeah, the, the, the up top. Uh, one. 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 The tucking guy. We don't have any loot on our ship, right? Nope. I might just let it sail, honestly. And then go attack their ship. Thoughts? Oh, I'm fighting this guy. Give me a sec. GG's, man. The second one's still alive. We need to sink the ship, though. I'm on. I don't see the other one. Atop the ship, atop the ship. I saw the glint. They settled. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. Back to our ship. <laughs> we gotta get our ship back. Now, situations like these are often a lot more difficult for the server hoppers than those defending their loot. While us foiling their plans of taking the key was a complete accident, we did intentionally force them to take the fight somewhere that would benefit us, and in their case, losing just once meant the end of their journey. Wasn't it for us doing that stupid thing with a mermaid trap, either these guys or the other server hoppers from the previous episode would have probably gotten away with the steal. But for Brandon and I, all that mattered was upholding our end of the bargain. I told our friends that money was of no concern to me so long that I could get the clip for my video, allowing them to sell every piece of loot, which of course was a bold-faced lie, and I definitely snuck the Ashen Wind Skull past them to give Brandon and me a bit of a financial boost. I mean, technically speaking, that skull was not inside the vault, so everything was fair play, right? Either way, our voyage finally came to an end with all of us getting exactly what we wanted. And if what you want is to watch another episode, may I suggest that aforementioned mermaid trap video? Sure, you might know how it ends, but witnessing the struggle of setting it up is well worth a watch if you ask me. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea, and until next time, peace.